Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. This video is made possible by the very kind donations of viewers like you. Thank you. If you are in a position to help this channel improve quality and grow, please visit my Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. Before we get started today, I just wanted to mention this is the second battle in the invasion of Procyon. Well, you can fully enjoy this video on its own. You might get a little more if you watch the first battle. See the card above or the link below for that. Now, I hope you enjoy the carnage. It is the 31st century, and mankind is once again at war. The battlefields of the future are dominated by huge robotic war machines known as battle mechs. Despite the size difference, the Tikhonov Republic's invasion of the Free Worlds League was going well. The assault on Procyon had gone almost perfectly thus far. The initial covert operations had succeeded in contacting the insurgent groups on the planet, as well as at least initially tricking the garrison forces into believing a Draconis Combine raiding force was on the planet. Colonel Ridzik's flagship, the Omaha Beach, had given his air forces a massive advantage during the initial landing phase. The second Syrian Lancer's Air Corps launched strikes on the landing dropships. Normally, such a tactic had the potential to be devastating, but Ridzik's Vengeance-class fighter carrier allowed for air cover and coordination even when the dropships were at their most vulnerable. The Free Worlds League conventional and aerotech assets were cut to ribbons over the Tikhonov landing zones. Ridzik believed that Procyon held a treasure trove of ancient Star League technology and as such had taken no chances in taking the planet. His strategy was simple, yet effective. His overall objective was the old Brigadier Corporation plant. In its day, the old plant had produced a catalog of advanced systems for the Star League, and despite its dilapidated state, Ridzik believed he could retrieve the priceless information stored there. More short-term, Ridzik wanted to capture Calgary the planet's capital city. The city was protected not only by the second Syrian Lancers, but also the terrain. The George River provided a formidable barrier even for Ridzik. The river was deep, wide, and its flow could be unpredictable. Forging the river could be dangerous even for battle mechs, and ferrying his troops by air would be time-consuming and costly. The city's integrated air defenses provided cover to most potential crossing spots. Ridzik knew securing Calgary would depend on seizing the bridges so he could move his troops quickly through the river and marshlands. The first bridge, named Basin, fell easily and was already in Republic hands when Ridzik himself made planetfall. The second bridge, named Vacor, had no chance of withstanding the first Republic Guard. As the technicians worked to prepare Ridzik's ancient thunderbolt for action, the newly appointed supreme leader of the Tikhonov Republic decided not to wait. He did not want to waste the opportunity the defenseless bridge presented. One of the first Republic Guard mech warriors was injured in the landing. Ridzik would commandeer this mech warrior's vindicator and accompany the simple line lands to secure the bridge. It was supposed to be a morale-building exercise, allowing his troops to see him leading from the front. After all, he would be in no real danger, even without his family's heirloom. The town of Dulay served as a rest stop for the convoys leading in and out of the city. The small city's population had largely fled. Intelligence had reported the city had been all but abandoned. The operation to Dulay was planned based largely on the belief that all serious forces were already gone. What Ridzik did not know was that an ad hoc force of mechs and tanks had remained behind. 
These militia members were determined to delay the enemy advance, protecting their families and loved ones still traveling to Calgary. Ridzik's ceremonial mission was about to encounter a dug-in and determined foe. Turn one. The demolisher tank stays in his hiding spot. The cataphract runs to the rubble. The blackjack runs after the cataphract. The manticore tank holds position. Ridzik and his vindicator jumps into cover behind the nearby hill. The Free Worlds League locust holds behind the building. The other manticore also stays put. The catapult runs with the rest of his lands. The manticore opens fire on the approaching catapult with his PPC and LRM-10, but misses. The Crusader also targets the Republic catapult with both LRM-15 launchers, but also misses. The other manticore also fires on the catapult with his PPC and LRM-10, but can't hit. Ridzik fires off his LRM-5 and PPC as he lands at the lead Manticore tank, but misses. Turn two. The Manticore holds position. The catapult walks forward and turns. The Blackjack walks with the catapult. The Demolisher cruises out of his hiding spot, bringing his dual super heavy auto cannons to bear. The Cataphract Crusader, Manticore, and Vindicator all hold, aiming. The Locust runs out of cover to the rubble of the collapsed building. The Locust fires both medium lasers at the catapult, one hitting the left leg. The Manticore also fires on the catapult. His PPC misses, but some of his LRM missiles slam into the Republic mech's head. The catapult mech warrior, now injured, targets the dangerous demolisher with all four of his medium lasers raking the vehicle with laser fire on the right side, front, and burns out a stabilizer on the turret. The Blackjack also targets the demolisher with his dual large lasers hitting the front and turret. The Demolisher crew line up on the Blackjack, unleashing a hail of explosive rounds at the Blackjack. The damage stabilizer causes them to misjudge, and they miss. The Cataphract fires his AC-10, large laser, and SRM-4 at the Demolisher. The armor-piercing autocannon rounds blowing away armor off the heavy turret while a laser and missile slam into the front armor. The Crusader locks on and fires his LRM-15s at the catapult, explosions blooming on the center torso and both arms. The Manticore follows the Crusader's lead, firing his PPC, damaging the left leg, while missiles rip what little armor remained off the left leg and damaging the left torso. Turn three. The catapult mech warrior injured and shocked by the onslaught stumbles, but somehow manages to keep his machine under control. He jumps back trying to escape the withering fire. The blackjack runs north trying to get behind the demolisher. Ridzik in his vindicator aims still confident of victory. The demolisher continues forward. The cataphract runs south away from the Demolisher's guns. The Crusader holds position. The Locust backs away from the approaching cataphract. The two Manticores hold, aiming at their targets. Catapult fires both LRMs at the Demolisher as he lands but misses. Ridzik also targets the dangerous tank, firing his PPC, medium laser, and LRM bomb. The PPC melts into the front, damaging the motive system, missiles also hitting the front while the laser hits the turret. The demolisher swings his turret around, unleashing both AC-20s at the blackjack. 
This time the rounds find their mark, slamming into the right torso, completely blowing the right arm and torso apart, even ripping armor off the center torso. The Manticore fires on the approaching cataphract. The PPC blasts melting armor off the right torso, while missiles explode against the right and center torsos. The Crusader also targets the cataphract, firing both LRM-15s. Most of the missiles miss, but a few find the left torso. The cataphract lines up on the demolisher tank, unleashing his AC-10, both the lasers and his SRM-4. The auto cannon rounds miss, a laser finds the front, SRMs explode against the turret, locking it into its position. Some missiles also hit the front, finding a weak seam in the damaged front armor, sending burning shrapnel bouncing around inside the tank, leaving nothing but gore behind. The Manticore also fires on the cataphract. His PPC misses, but missiles damage the Republic mech's left torso and arm. The Blackjack mech warrior struggles with his controls, but the damage is just too great. He tumbles, falling hard on his right leg. Turn four. The catapult walks forward. The blackjack manages to stand, running to the building. The crusader stays in the building, aiming out. The Locust races forward, cutting north. The Cataphract walks to intercept the Locust. The Manticore tank holds position. The danger of the Demolisher removed, Ridzik changes targets. The Locust fires both medium lasers and both machine guns at the Cataphract. A machine gun burst hitting the left arm. He kicks out, but misses the larger mech. The Cataphract responds, firing his AC-10, two medium lasers and SRM-4 at the bug mech. His medium laser damaging the thin armor of the left arm, the SRM's finding the legs. He kicks out, but also misses with his physical attack. The Manticores both target the catapult, trying to bring down the mech, but both PPCs and all the missiles miss. Ridzik and his Vindicator fires his PPC and LRM-5 at the Manticore. The PPC damaging the front, missiles damaging the left side, and almost locking up the treads. The Crusaders' LRM swarm out of the catapult, but the missiles lose lock, flying by harmlessly. The catapult targets the Manticore with both LRM-15s. Both miss, only a few hitting the left side. Turn five. The Manticore holds his ground. Ridzik also stays in cover, targeting. The Locust runs around the cataphract, trying to get behind his Republic enemy. The Crusader holds position. The catapult runs to catch up with the cataphract. The Blackjack jumps around the building. The cataphract runs, setting up to attack the Manticores. Ridzik, his experience showing, switches targets to the approaching Locust, trying to bring it down. His PPCs and LRMs land down. Missiles miss, but the PPC blast heavily damages the Locust's left leg. The Locust returns fire on the Vindicator with his medium lasers damaging Ridzik's left arm. The Manticore also targets the Vindicator but misses. The other Manticore has better luck. The PPC blast further damaging Ridzik's left arm. The Crusader again sends a swarm of LRMs downrange, this time at Ridzik. The missiles fly low, digging holes in the hill Ridzik is taking cover behind. The catapult flips arms, firing both LRM-15 banks at the Locust, destroying the light mech's left arm and torso. Turn 6. Ritzik keeps encouraging his troops forward. The cataphract walks south and turns. The catapult backs south to cover the cataphract. The locust runs, getting behind Ritzik's Vindicator. The manticores hold their ground. The crusader, almost out of LRMs, runs getting into melee with the cataphract. The blackjack runs around the building. 
Ritzik fires his PCC and LRM-5 at the Manticore, melting more armor off the battle tank's front armor. The Cataphract Alpha strikes the charging crusade. Auto cannon rounds miss, but the large laser in one of the mediums hits the left torso and right arm. He kicks out cracking armor of the right leg. The Locust opens up with his dual medium lasers and machine gun. A laser hits the center rear torso, but cannot penetrate the armor. The other laser hits the left leg, while the machine gun rounds stitch across the left arm. Both Manticore's Alpha strike the catapult, trying to bring the mechs in. Most of the weapons miss, four SRMs slamming into the mech's right torso. The Crusader fires both leg-mounted SRM sixes up at the cataphract. Explosions bloom all over the mech. He swings his battle fists out, missing with one. The Republic mech warrior just able to block the other blow with his right arm. The Blackjack fires his remaining large laser and medium laser at the Crusader. The lasers melting into the center torso and left torso. Turn seven. The cataphract slips and falls, crashing his left torso into the dirt. He gets back up. The catapult jumps over the collapsed building. The locust runs forward, getting behind the cataphract and catapult. The crusader walks, keeping in melee with the cataphract. The blackjack walks behind the tanks. Ridzik holds his position. The damaged Manticore holds position as the other moves forward. The Manticore turns his turret at the damaged Blackjack firing his PPC at both missile launchers. The PPC damages the right arm while SRMs slam into the head and center torso. The Crusader again unleashes all 12 of his SRMs at the cataphract, explosions raking across the mech's left side and right leg. He punches out, the cataphract again sacrificing his right arm, but the other punch hits him square in the center torso. The blackjack fires his lasers down at the manticore, the large laser damaging the turret, the medium laser melting armor off the rear, followed by a thundering kick to the tank's rear. The locust fires both medium lasers at the cataphract, one laser melting armor off the rear center torso. Ridzik, worried about the beating his lance is taking, targets the Crusader, his PPC melting armor off the right leg, his LRMs hitting the League mech's center torso. The other Manticore swings his turret around, trying to save his friend. He fires his PPC, LRM-10, and SRM-6. The PPC misses, but missiles rip away at the right leg and center torso. The cataphract fires his heavy auto cannon at the Crusader, the AC-10 rounds hitting the right arm. He kicks out, hitting the left leg. The catapult opens up with his four medium lasers, but misses the Crusader. Turn 8. The Crusader backs off. Ridzik keeps aiming. The cataphract circles the Crusader, getting behind him. The catapult also runs down the Crusader. The Manticore continues forward. The Blackjack prepares to fire again. The Locust backs into melee with the Vindicator. The damaged Manticore holds position. The Crusader fires both SRM-6s again, this time at the catapult. Missiles blowing holes in the right torso and arm. He punches out both battle fists, further damaging the exposed right torso. Ritzik sees an opening, targeting the Locust. He lines up firing his PPC and LRM-5. The PPC heavily damages the center torso. He punches out, ramming his Vindicator's fist through the Locust center torso, dropping the back. The blackjack fires down at the manticore, the large laser hitting the rear while the medium laser and his kick hit the turret. Cataphract fires his AC-10, two medium lasers, and SRM-4 at the rear of the Crusader. 
A medium laser melts armor off the rear right torso and left arm. SRMs hit the left leg and right arm. The catapult opens up with all four medium lasers on the Crusader, hitting the right torso, left leg, left arm, and center torso. He kicks out, hitting the left leg, destroying it. The Crusader falls hard on his right torso and right leg. The Manticores again both target the Blackjack with their weapons. PPCs, LRM, and SRM smash into the mech, blowing chunks of armor out of the right torso and arm. One PPC ripping the center torso out of the Blackjack, falling to the ground in two parts. Turn 9. The cataphract turns south. The catapult backs up and turns. The crusader holds, taking aim. Ridzik starts to worry. The manticore backs up as his partner continues to hold ground. The manticores target the catapult, firing his PPC and missile launcher. The PPC damages the left leg while the missiles explode against the other leg. Two of the SRMs finding the mech's head. The catapult mech warrior now injured passes out. The other manticore targets the now helpless catapult, his PPC and missiles blowing chunks out of the machine. The now unconscious mech warrior bleeds internally, almost dead when the mech crashes into the ground. The crusader fires on the cataphract with his medium lasers and machine guns, hitting the left arm and right torso. Ritzik again fires on the Manticore, with PPC and LRMs finding the battle tank's front armor. The Cataphract fires on the Manticore with his AC-10, the armor-piercing rounds crashing through what little remained of the front armor, finally bringing down the damage. He switches targets to the Crusader, firing the rest of his weapons, his large laser digging into the torso, finding the LRM bin, detonating the remaining reloads. At first, the mech seems like it might survive, but then the flames reach the machine gun ammo and the League mech vanishes. Turn 10. Ridzik weighs his options. The cataphract walks behind the manticore. The manticore backs up, trying to get behind the cataphract. The manticore fires all of his weapons at the cataphract. The PPC damages the left arm, while the laser and SRMs crash into the left torso, setting off the remaining SRM ammo. The cataphract blows apart just as the crusade. Ridzik considers fleeing, but decides to stay. He locks on and fires at the manticore, the PPC damaging the treads on the right side while the missiles begin chipping away armor off the front. Turn 11. The manticore crawls towards the Vindicator. Ridzik hold. The manticore opens up again on the not moving but still active catapult ripping into the center torso, right arm, and right torso. Ridzik challenges the manticore, unwilling to watch his countrymen just die. He fires his PPC and LRM, hitting the tank's front armor, and missiles smash into the turret. Turn 12. Being shaken around, the dying mech warrior opens his eyes, remembering his new state's leader is in danger. Ridzik lines up on the manticore, which continues to target the now moving catapult. The Republic mech warrior fires both LRM launchers at the manticore, some hitting the rear and right side, blowing a tread off the tank. Ridzik fires again, hitting the right side, but cannot stop the manticore from firing again at the down catapult, destroying the crippled mech's right arm. Turn 13. 
Ridzik keeps aiming, trying to save the Republic mech warrior. The manticore starts to crawl forward despite the damaged tread. Ritzik again fires on the manticore, but his PPC and LRM, despite hitting, can't do enough damage to stop it. Catapult Mac Warrior fires his remaining LRM, but misses. The manticore swings around, his turret now targeting Ritzik. He fires, but misses. Turn 14. All combatants hold their ground. The catapult Mac Warrior keeps pulling his triggers, no longer lucid enough to really aim. Ridzik again fires on the manticore, his PPC, LRM, and medium laser ripping away at the tank's front. The manticore returns fire, medium laser hitting Ridzik's center torso. The PPC was aimed too low, hitting the hill. Turn 15. Again, all combatants hold position. The manticore opens up on Ridzik, the PPC hitting his right torso, along with some LRMs. The catapult's LRMs again fly up, but go nowhere near the manticore. Ridzik glares, lining up his PPC and LRMs, the charged particles and explosions from the missiles finally taking out the weapon. Aftermath. What was supposed to be a safe mission, mainly for morale, nearly ended in disaster for the Republic. Although Ridzik was safe, the lance he had joined to lead from the front was all but destroyed. While the fate of Vacor Bridge was never in doubt, the intelligence failure was an embarrassment. Steps were taken to cover up the incident. This proved to be fairly easy. The League witnesses were dead, and one Republic mech warrior was already dead. The other would not live long with his injuries. Ridzik would send the first Republic guard under the command of Colonel Carla Nasora forward, instead staying back with the second, taking up his family's thunderbolt on his first deployment of the campaign. Ridzik would lead the second guard against Charles Bridge. He would send an amphibious assault backed up by airstrikes and his command company, being officially the first to engage League forces. The first Republic Guard would battle their way through marshland being bogged down by League hovercraft, using the terrain to their advantage. Ridzik would turn his second guard south to link up with the first and a fateful encounter. Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. Thank you for watching my content. It really means a lot that you have given me the chance to entertain you. If you would like to support the channel, please visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. Also below is a link for PayPal, or links if you would like to send crypto, if that's more your thing. Please know any amount that you give will be cherished and used to upgrade equipment and improve the channel. You can also help the channel by subscribing, turning on notifications, liking, commenting, and sharing my channel with anyone you think might be interested. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoy the battle reps that are to come.